four games left. Can Jed Fish right the ship? You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in to another edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He's site editor with Athlon Sports is inside the Huskies. I'm the site editor with Huskies Wire. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen of the day as we are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get Started, Lars, got a really fun show coming at all the other days today. We're going to get into four-star Washington commit as of right now, Vander Plug, who got projected to flip to Oregon by most major recruiting sites on Sunday. We're going to talk about the biggest worry of the offense, because personally, I don't, I don't know if it's the offensive line. We'll get more into that later, but we need to start off with the big question here. Washington has four games left this season. Can Jed Fish right the ship and get Washington to at least be bowl eligible? I mean, man, that's I mean the question. I mean, the benefit is you in those four games, which is probably pointed out, you have USC and UCLA. Right. And then you have Oregon and Penn State. Right. It's basically like having the like Northwestern and Michigan on your schedule, I mean, and then having the Seahawks and, and you're, you're like Alabama and Georgia. No, no, like, I, I, there's I, a different I, class here in those terms, like you can have two winnable games sure. and two games where you're like looking for a prayer here. But I don't even think you need to like make an analogy there. I, I I get what you're saying. I don't think it necessarily is an analogy where we know USC, they've struggled. They're around 500, just like Washington. We know UCLA, they've struggled. And then in the, you know, just poll, they're number one and number three. Like it's like that, that's what it is. And those games are on the road where USC and UCLA are at home. So personally, I, I guess the opportunity to get bowl eligible if you especially if you win both games at home. But I, the reason I say that is because we've seen the flashes. We've seen, okay, you can put it together this way. You can put it together that way. There've been, you know, nice, nice runs from the defense. The offenses look nice and stretches. There's a lot to clean up. There's a lot to clean up for the Saturday, but I think there's enough potential with this team. There's enough talent on this team, especially when you look at some of the upperclassmen that, yeah, that, they can find a way to at least be bowl eligible, which it sucks that we have to talk about it in this light, but this is kind of where we are at this point. Well, it's where we thought that like, we said eight and four at the beginning of the season. It's like, that was, I think we should probably kind of clarify that whole, like our record projection is based on sure. if everything goes well, like if you know, this works well, if the offensive line holds up, we it's worth, cause it's worth noting. We did say, look, this is like a six and six roster that could be at best eight, but it's not, like three, two, you know, four, three, two wins. They're, they're not that bad. Right. So this is kind of almost where we thought they'd be, but this is where you get paid for kicking the game against Rutgers, where you kick the game against Wazoo, where if you win those two, you're, you're already a boy eligible. Right. So and now you can just say like, like, where does it look? Like, okay, are we at eight, seven, eight, nine? Maybe. Sure. But all of a sudden, you like, like, let's say, obviously we can't change the results of those games. But we know Washington was in both those games and had an opportunity to win both those games. It just, it changes the outlook of the entire season where, you know, we talked about it after the Iowa game where, you know, there were a lot of Indiana fans in the comments. Some of them, you know, talking as, as they will at 8-0. Some of them saying, hey, I don't think this Washington team is too far off. We've seen this. Like, the defense looked really good. There are a couple of things that maybe didn't go your way this way or that way. And it looks like this team is really close to being pretty competitive and pretty successful. And I don't, and that, that, I think that's the problem where we look, I, I don't think any of those people are wrong, but we look at those things and we say, yeah, that's been the most frustrating part of this season in some of these close games, in these one possession games that Washington has lost, they had every opportunity to win those games. And that's why, you know, if you would come out just right away and said, no, I don't necessarily know if Washington can write the chip here. I, I don't think I would have disagreed with you because their record in one possession games this year has been frustrating to say the least. And you look at it and just say, all right, this is what with this, like, you know, when you, you talk about eight and four, this is why we thought that Washington was going to be able to get to that, that ceiling. Because you look at the seniors on this team, you look at the veterans on this team and you say, all right, yeah, for sure. We think that with this, this veteran experience that in those one possession games that will win out and that will be able to win Washington the day. And so far it hasn't. 
But here, and so the reason why I kind of was not dodging the question, I wanted you to kind of lay that out in the forefront so it doesn't become a sure. burial. Because to answer the question, can Jed get out of is the question is can Jed get out of his own way? Can Jed do it the right way? Because I think a lot of this goes back to because you're basically saying, is it play players and execution or play calling? And that's not not necessarily play calling specific, but just the way of operation. I, I, again, we both don't think it's a quarterback issue in terms of DeMond going in when Will is. It's like it, that hasn't been a detriment. That wasn't a detriment against him. That wasn't why you lost to Indiana. That wasn't why you lost. That situation has not been an issue. What's been the issue is well, A, bodies up front. So, you know, let's have. So, again, you kind of have to quantify it a little bit saying, we know the situation. You don't have last year's offensive line. Yeah, you get it. That's why the expectations were tempered. You weren't going to be a playoff team this year regardless. But there's a lot of decisions that you can kind of look at Jed and say, why? Yeah, And exactly. when you look at that, here's the thing. From Rutgers to Wazoo, or actually Wazoo to Rutgers, to Iowa, and now to Indiana. There's a lot of repeat issues in those situations where you look at some things and it's like, mm, why are we doing that? What, what's missing? And now – is Jed going to say, well, you know, with the situation we got, well, first of all, here's what Jed's going to say. Jed's going to say, well, this is the situation we got. We kind of knew this was going to be the thing. We don't want to disrespect Will because Will's a fifth year. And again, I saw this a lot on Twitter. Speaking of people, you know, reading the mentions and sort of things. Yeah, Will didn't have his best game. In hindsight, should he have gotten the first down on that, you know, the fourth down run where he kind of basically just went into the Indiana defender? Okay, that that's one play, but is that the reason? And people say it was at a tipping point, sure. But that alone, like that singular play, wasn't like the deflating moment in the game where right. oh the players quit or things like that. To me, it's I'm not sure. It's Jed basically trying to say, you know, look, we're gonna kind of the season's a wash, you know. We're, we're we're gonna you know check check check, and then maybe we'll fold. Like it's not a big gamble. You don't lose a ton. But as you mentioned on what was it Friday show or Saturday the, the post game show. Jets getting seven and a half, not points. Yeah, he's getting seven and a half million. Right. So part of it is like, yeah, I understand you're you're kind of hamstrung by the portal and it is what it is. But where's the development? We haven't seen now again. Yes, they're young. Uh, and they, I, no, 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 no. I'm saying there's not not across the board because there's been development in certain places. I think a lot of guys have gotten right. better, but collectively, if the issues are still arising, you can't say they've gotten better. So I, I, I agree with you there where I think, and th this is why, like I, I wrote about it over the bye week over on the Huskies wire, where I think that Jed Fish is playing, like it's clear what he wants to do. It's very clear this is where he wants to take this team and that there's a lot of youth. There's still a lot of areas that you're struggling, but I, you're, you're absolutely right. Because I look at, you know, Kelly Tafai, where he was, I, I think I saw he was the highest graded uh, pass blocker in the game yesterday for, for Washington side. Grant to him for that. That's a redshirt freshman. Came in, did a really good job. He didn't start, but he did a really good job. Or that's something where you can point to and say, yeah, that looked really good. Finding ways to utilize demand in the red zone. Finally, you know, running that read option on like the, inside the 10-yard line. Great. Great to see that. Those are little steps. I think that was one of those little steps that you see. Where you talk about development, I think that's one of them. Where I can't remember where I saw it, but it's like, yeah, just let your athletes be athletes near the goal line. And find a way to get them in space, get the ball in their hands, and, and go with it that way. Absolutely. With, with the Giles touchdown, I think it was something similar where that was a new wrinkle. We hadn't seen that near the goal line yet. That was really nice to see. But those are just small steps. And you look at it on third down. You were still 3 of 11 on third down. You were one of the worst teams in the nation on third down. You are still averaging under 24 points per game, even though you've outgained your opponent in every game. Those are things that need to be corrected. And I think there are ways to do that, but it's just it's getting into crunch time now. You, you look at it now and you just say, all right, we're – we're in the final four games of the season where, you know, you look at it in September, you look at it against like, let's say Weber state and Eastern Michigan. Right. And you say, all right, this is like, you know, th this is fine. There's still, there's still a whole bunch of time to correct this. It's a new team. You figure it out then, but eight games into the season, it, I, there, there's no root for that anymore. Like, those were things that should have been figured out. Well, especially coming off a of bye week like that's the thing. Like Jonah got rested. Everybody got, you know, checked in. And like I said, you could take a deep. You could take a deep dive into an empty pool in the deep end. Right. I I will say I also I I was okay with the usage of Jonah. I think they they did a much better job with that, uh, especially like you know down down in the red zone, a little bit closer to the goal line. We've got a whole lot more though, Lars. That we got to get into because I don't I don't know about you, but I don't think the biggest worry on this offense is the offensive line. 
We'll get there right now. message from our good friends over at FanDuel. You can get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel America. So if you win the FanDuel Sports app, Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit fanduel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's fanduel.com. Never waste a hunch to make every moment more with fanduel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So, Lars. I don't think the biggest worry with the offense is the offensive line where, you know, we talked about it yesterday and we said, yeah, you know, the, the offensive line certainly needs to improve. There's certainly a lot of room for improvement there, but the play calling has also been an issue at times. And personally, I think the biggest issue is the third down offense. Like I said, they are 115th in the nation on third down three of 11 yesterday, one of three on fourth down. It was just brutal to say the least. And it feels like, like, yeah, for sure. I know Jed talks about, Oh, you know, we got behind the sticks here. So we didn't necessarily get to do what we wanted to do. It's there. There are other ways that you can try to find a way to make it work. And it just feels like a lot of times when this offense gets into third and long, and especially when, you know, a team like Indiana who has 24 sacks on the year. Now it's one of the best in the big 10 at getting after the quarterback is able to just pin their ears back and get after you. I know that, you know, part of that will fall on the offensive line, but it's something you pointed out yesterday when Yogi Roth said on the broadcast as well, is there are so many long developing routes and all of a sudden you're putting yourself in a, posi- in a position where I don't, I don't think the play call is, or, or, excuse me let, me, let me rephrase that. I don't think that the offensive line is going to matter when, you know, you're taking four or five seconds to get open or yeah, you don't have that much time anyway, but you're calling routes short of the sticks on the other side of that. And it just doesn't feel like there's a happy medium there of it's third and eight. Here's what we're going to do. It, it's like, what's the book? I think it's the divine comedy, the journey into hell. How many layers of hell do you go through? It's like, what is the core issue? And then build out from there because they all kind of run in circles. And the, the reason why I say that is it's like, well, okay, well, it is on the offensive line on some of it because, you know, you're talking about long developing routes that takes away a part of your game that you want to do. Because, yeah, you know, as Jed says in basically every press conference, we want to run the ball, we want to do this, we want to take shots on the field. Right. Yeah. Take, shot, take shots out of the field, out of the equation for that. Okay, cool. You still can run the ball. So you can't run block and you can't really pass block. Right. What are we? What are we? Do, what are we doing here? And here's the thing, and this is why it kind of ties all together. With the biggest worry is the offense. Like the defense, defense can defense like you held, you held Indiana to, thir- to twenty one, really thirty one, but twenty one. When you talk 24. about point, right, twenty four, twenty one. But point being, well under their forty nine, and you didn't look like, with all due respect, Nebraska the previous week, where it's you know forty nine nothing, fifty six, whatever, whatever that bloodbath. Sixty seven, yeah, it was bad. Where, where it, it, it wasn't that, but it almost feels worse. Where it's like, it, uh, it, 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 in a way, where it's like, you can, it's like you know the problem, and nothing is going to change because you're not getting an emergency transfer right. unless Justin Hilkema decides to get play, unless they decide to play Justin Hilkema, and it's like out of the blue he becomes this all. Which again, it's not. I'm not. This is not an indictment on Hilkema. I'm just saying it's like, what else can you reach into the bag at this point? It's like, are you going to exactly. put demonic quarterback, and all of a sudden, boom! Now the offensive line is magically better. It's like, no. Well, that's but that's. That's part of it. I get what you're saying. I, I get where you're going with that. But it just feels like it's an overwhelming issue with the offense as a whole. Where, you know, when I when I say happy media and it's okay, yeah, you know, on, on second and ten, we're gonna call this this shot play, but it's gonna take four or five seconds to develop when you know you don't have four or five seconds. That doesn't necessarily fall on the offensive line because you know what you have. They're doing their job to the best of their ability. That falls on the play calling saying, all right, instead of doing that, let, let's run some quick outs. Let's run a slant. Let's run something a little bit different where, you know, it's not even that Will has to sit back there and process and see see things a little bit differently. It's just to get the ball out of his hands. Our, our buddy Jake Butt has been on the show multiple times. And when he's talked about Will Rogers, he said he's done a really good job when he's in rhythm at getting the ball out of his hands quickly. And, I don't think that Will is necessarily bad when he's got to hold the ball for a lot longer, but it just makes things harder on the play as a whole. Exactly. And that's the thing. If you look at the numbers, the numbers haven't been bad. Now, again, right. does he make the perfect decision all the time? No. Is he a Heisman finalist? No. 
but he's not just some guy. He's not just some quarterback. I mean, you look at the guys that he's relatively around. I mean, Noah Fafita and, and Will Rogers were not that far off in terms of, you know, yards per game and relative stats like that. So it, it'd be different if Will was really struggling or if, you know. But the problem is, again, you kind of look at Will and you look at the options that he's been given. He kind of locks into guys at times. It almost seems like before the ball is even snapped, he knows where he's going to go. But right. again, that is kind of why I, I I keep posing this question, and we got at Ross Jed on Monday. Was, I, you know, how much autonomy does the quarterback have in this offense? Yeah, and we both know the answer is none. But it's like I kind of want to see where Jed goes with that because what is the difference that Demond has? Where Demond's got a role, but you're also developing that role because you're trying to develop Demond to get him to be a complete quarterback as like a true freshman, get him that you know relative experience that Shaker Kendall has. So you say it's a competition at the end of the day because you don't want DeMond to just flat up say, hey, you're the starter because why Why wouldn't Shea transfer? Sure. Like, wh- wh- what's to prevent it? And then, and then now you have a true freshman and Dash Lee, who's now going to be a true freshman next year, so a sophomore, a freshman, and then another freshman, and Keeney McMillan coming in in June. Are you going to go back to the portal again for another Kirk Kendall? And that sell becomes even harder because it's like, well, if DeMond's the guy, what are we doing here? You know, that's what, and that's, I think, what we talked about yesterday on the, on the, on the, no, I hear you. Yeah. The other post game show where it was, you know, like there seems to be something wrong where it's like, it's not friction. It's not, we don't know what the word is, but there's clearly, the word is disconnect. There's clearly something like tectonic plates is not going right here. I, the thing that I look at when I see it is it feels like Jed's offense is more designed for what DeMond's skill set is. And, but with Will's experience, you cannot pass on that. That's one of the points we've been trying to make throughout the season. You cannot pass on that and just say, Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, no, we're going to, you know, roll with the true freshman here where DeMond is extremely talented. You and I, we cannot say this enough. We are so excited for the future of DeMond Williams is, but for what this team was, everything we talked about yesterday with all the seniors on this team, no matter who you want to turn to and point to and just say, yeah, that guy, Will was the right guy to go with. Will was the right guy to have in this bridge here to get to DeMond. And it still feels like we are getting closer to that, you know, I don't want to say inevitability, but that point where we're going to see more DeMond. I still feel like that's going to be the UCLA game. but. The more, the more I look at it, the more it just kind of feels like Jed is doing something that I, this is the only example that I can make on this. So bear with me here. It feels like exactly what the plan was when Jed was coaching Cam Newton in 2020 in New England, where Josh McDaniels was the offensive coordinator at the time. He had an offense specifically designed for Tom Brady for so many years. And then all of a sudden he's still calling plays, but now Cam Newton's in there and you had to do things way differently. And we saw that we saw them, you know, run more quarterback power. We saw them find ways to get Cam more integrated into the offense and find a way to make things easy for him. And it worked for about a month. And then all of a sudden you look at what the Patriots did the year after when they went back to Mac Jones, who is exactly what, you know, a Tom Brady clone in that sense of a pocket passer who's going to stand in there, try to deliver the ball in rhythm. Didn't work very well, but you saw that's what the offense was. And I, uh, the reason I, I bring all this up is it almost feels like the reverse of that now, where you look at Jed's time as a head coach in Arizona. You look at some of the, the guys that he learned from, Sean McVay being the premier one. Look at how that offense changed in Los Angeles with the Rams when Matthew Stafford got there compared to what it was with Jared Goff. And I, again, I say that because you look at what Jed wanted and how he recruits the position. And you see, okay, I see a guy that's going to, you know, get out of the pocket and do things. And it's not that Will can't. It is not that Will can't do that. But that is not his strength. That is DeMond's strength. And that's why when we see DeMond in there, it obviously looks so different because he's got a different skill set and everything. But that I, I think that's the, the point I'm trying to make here is Jed has run a particular offense for so many years. And Will just doesn't, isn't necessarily the, the single best scheme fit. But because of who he is and what he's done, he is the best fit for this team right now. Couple things. Great point about Cam Newton. 
get him on the show. Cam, open invitation. No. Because hey, the way, no, I, no, the way, yeah. no, the way, no, the way, no, the way he breaks down film, like, I don't know if you've seen those TikToks. Oh, it's, no, but like, it's fantastic, I, yeah. No, I would, no, I would love Cam's opinion about this because that's a fantastic point because it gets back to something Jed sells all the time, 24, 365, and Cam as a former player, both in college and then, you know, what he got to experience with Jed in the NFL, you, your adaptability. Like you knew going into the season what you had at quarterback. Why not kind of design an offense with all your years of experience in the NFL and all this wisdom that you have designing an offense and coaching quarterback? Hang on, because here's the thing. No, yeah. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna sell the NFL, where's the evolution? Like are we just gonna run the same thing over and over? And then it becomes like, oh hey, there's a reason why older coaches don't exactly work out if you don't evolve. So I hear your point and I don't disagree with you, but this comes back to a point that you you made very, very well the other day when you said, oh, okay, you know, you, you talked about when Jed talked about the offensive line and said, we were hamstrung by this, we were hamstrung by that with only getting to work in the spring portal. You have to think about that in this as well, where at the same point of trying to build an entirely new roster, because that's pretty much what this was. You're also trying to have to design a whole new offense. That's, that's pretty difficult to do. And that's where we've seen seen some of these issues arise, I think. And that might be a, a huge part of this. It might be a much bigger part of this than this coaching staff is willing to let on. But I think that's something you have to, at the very least, consider in all this with the way that everything has portrayed with some of the issues that we're seeing that kind of feels like where some of this might lie. Lars, this has been a fantastic conversation, but we've got to move to the recruiting trail because there, there's a good chance Vander Blue does not sign with Washington. Which will get you right off the message from our good friends over at Game Time, because Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks. The mix getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time th searching through thousands of tickets, which is great news for anybody who wants to go to a Husky football game, as there are only two home games left. Husky basketball, I'm going to be using it to get some Kraken tickets, maybe some Seahawks tickets. There are so many great tickets that you can find over on the Game Time app because the Game Time Picks curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy theater, and so much more. All in pricing where if you talk about this feature, it shows the total up front with no surprise fees to check out. And with this, their seat, you should get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. You can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So Lars, I'm I'm gonna hand this off to you. Where first off, shameless plug, this is something we hinted at with our lockdown Huskies insiders on Friday. That this is something that that, that my, this might end up happening is the best way to put it. Where Vander Plug took an official visit to Oregon over this past weekend. Crystal Ball started rolling on Sunday that he's going to flip his prediction, or excuse me, his, flip his commitment from Washington to Oregon. You've had a lot more interaction with him than I have, so I'm just gonna hand the floor over to you. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of what we've said you know, since he committed and since his class got together over the summer, where basically, look, he loved the relationship with Jordan Papa. And to be clear, he took an unofficial visit to Washington to Oregon before he made his commitment to Washington. To, a couple. No, but I'm saying. Yeah, because I, I was just going to say, he, we saw him twice on the field this season. Yeah. But, but I'm saying like, no, no I'm saying he took an unofficial visit to Oregon before he Correct, committed yeah. to Washington back in the spring. Yeah. And it was like, okay. Oregon was up, and so he and I asked him about that when I talked to him after his commitment, and he was like, "Yeah, look, Oregon is up front with me. Like they had a few other guys that were higher on their board. They like me, and like they were at least open and honest about the communication. And it's what we had used to hear about Chris Peterson. And again, I'm sure Washington's gonna say, "Oh, right, Jane Lennon being open and honest about communication." But I'm like, recruit says what the recruit says, and look how it plays out. It's how it used to play out for Washington, which was, "Hey, look, you know, we like you, but there's some other guys that we honestly have ahead of you. Whichever one commits, the Jake Browning effect. You know, you sure. and Brett pick one." Whoever goes first goes first, and that you know how that's where I ended. I'm just, yeah. but but I'm just but it, that's an example. And so and it wasn't and it's not that these kids are bad. It's like oh they're going to the highest bidder, they don't trust the pro. It's like look, there's something else that I play here with. Uh, I almost said the name with Vander Plu is Spencer Webb, the former Oregon uh, tight end who unfortunately lost his life in a I believe climbing accident. It was a terrible situation what happened down there, but Spencer was the guy who went. Vander was a freshman, was playing wide receiver, was actually considering quitting football, like wanted to give him the sport, played basketball, played baseball, wasn't the 6'6", six, six, two whatever, was he, 210, 220, 220, 220 whatever he is. something right? like that. Yeah. The, the, the ridiculously tall athlete that he is now. I think he was around six. He's like, I was, you know, a little smaller back then. I think I was like 6'1", and I was like, <laughs> you're telling that to a 5'6 guy. 
Like, that's adorable. <laughs> like, but and he got a good exactly. He got the same laugh out of that. But you know, Spencer told him, you know what? Try a tight end. Try, try just just try this out. You know, with the way the position's evolving and this and that. And you know, lo and behold, fast forward four years, Oregon, the connection. And here's the other side of it. That's the nail in the coffin. If you're a kid and you take out your fandom and you take out everything. You look at Washington and Oregon, one's about to play for a national championship under a current head coach. One went to a national championship under a former head coach now across the country. Situation's different. He loves Jordan Pow Pow, but I just think if you're Vander, it's like, okay, I can go to Oregon. In the worst case scenario, I can transfer to Washington in a couple of years. So the, the tough thing for me where, you know, assuming this does come to pass the way that it has, the toughest thing for me is that you look at the, the same thing that we talked about when we did earlier this summer saying, you know, I, I feel good about holding on to him at this point in time because of the ability to play early. Something that you and I have discussed on the air and off the air quite a bit at the tight end position, where at, at the end of the season, you're losing Kalecki Latu because of eligibility. Maybe Quentin Moore comes back. It, you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out, the medical redshirt thing that Jed had talked about. But then outside of that, of that at the position, Ryan Otten, who's unfortunately, I, I know Jed Fish talked about a couple weeks ago, unfortunately done for the season. We know Charlie Kroll is done for the year. And we look at the position right now. We haven't even seen Wilson Schwartz because he's been hurt. So Washington has had to rely on at the position, Decker to Graf, Kalecki Latu, and Owen Coots at times, walk on. Where you look at that and that's been the entire position where the only, the only person who's lined up at, you know, tight end, quote unquote, have been a sixth offensive lineman is Foy Tanufi and Zach Henning, where it's, it's great. We love seeing those guys get in there where, oh, no, please go ahead. No, I was just trying to the point. I wanted you to continue. Oh, yeah. Yes, like, boy, yeah, boy no. needs at least, two, at least, at least two targets for a game <laughs> at this point. I, I, you know, I, I'd pay to see him just like get, get a handoff on like, you know, third and one. That'd be a lot of fun. But I, when I look at that, my whole thought process was you look at the two guys that are currently, as of right now, as of recording this, on Sunday afternoon that are committed in this class in Vander and Bear Naone, you look at those two guys and say, those guys are both playing as much as Decker is, Decker DeGraff is. And you look at that room next season, and you know we've been talking about this with some of our insiders, with the way we look at it. I mean, obviously, it seems like they're going to end up taking a portal guy because that's going to be really helpful. But you look at it, and no matter what, you were going to see both of these guys play a lot. And Oregon has certainly pulled out the red carpet trying to be like, hey, look at how much we're using, you know, Keon Sadiq and Patrick Herbert and whoever else. But it's just, it's tough to look at it and just say, oh yeah, you know, the the opportunity that you would have at Oregon is, and of course, they're the number one team in the country right now. It's, it's very hard to turn that down. But you just look at the opportunity that Washington has provided at that position and how much potential for growth. And I wrote about this on Husky Squire as well. Look at look at all the, the Jordan Pow Pow tight ends at the NFL right now. Kate Otten just had a fantastic day. Shout out to him for that. Will Disley, Drew Sample. Like it's, it's cool to see that. And that's something that you can certainly sell, but it's very hard to turn Oregon down at this point in time. Uh, worth as you were saying that because all, all great points, but I was looking up some of the numbers because you mentioned Decker, fifth highest pass blocking UW player. That's shout out to him for that. So that no, that that's worth like not like it's not, it's not just playing. You're seeing playing and development. He had 36 yes. snaps at Iowa, obviously less against Indiana. Also worth noting, quick callback to our second segment, your first segment about Demond. Demond career low eight snaps against Indiana. So people calling for him. Yeah. So you're playing freshman, but you're also still managing him. You're not just throwing him in the fire and saying, "Hey, you're getting forty snaps a game. We're going to ask you." Because again, you want to develop guys, but you don't want to shell shock them. If you throw a guy into a fire, you know he's going to get burned, and then he's like, "Well, you know, now you're running those routes, and it kind of it stunts his growth and development." So you're sure. able to see that Jed has a plan at tight end. I will say it is also funny because I remember when uh, Pow Pow and Jed were first getting started in Arizona. And they tweeted out this recruiting graphic, and it said, look at all the uh, tight ends that Jordan Pow Pow has developed, referencing Arizona. And it was Will Disley. It was all the Washington tight ends. And I remember quote tweeting, it's like, weird, huh? Using a former school to, you know, elevate. And now how crazy it comes full circle. And so it's like, yeah, they're they're going to have to go get a portal. Probably two, I, I might say, depending on how attrition works out, you know. And you could go one veteran, one, se- one you know, senior or junior, and then one maybe freshman or sophomore. And. But again, here's the thing. That's why it's better to get those guys as recruits where you have them for four years, like Naone and, and Vander Plug. And I'm sure they'll at least take one more in the, in the high school class as well. They've thrown out some offers to some guys. I know there was an Auburn commit they got one as well. And so they they, they know the value of having four year guys because when you 
when you're talking about portal recruitment, you're talking about reaching into a black hole. Right. Because, you know, it, 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 yeah. theoretically, you know, behind, behind the scenes, you know. I get can, what you're saying, yeah. It, it cooks. It cooks. But still, like, you don't know who's going to be in there. You can't, like, this isn't like, you know, NFL free agency where, hey, this guy hasn't signed, you know, he hasn't had a deal yet. Maybe he'll be a free agent. We can kind of, these are some guys who are contracts who are upcoming. If it were like that, maybe it'd be easier to recruit the portal. I don't know. Maybe just a thought for the college football czar to throw out there. I know the NCAA won't do anything, but, you know, it'd be nice if somebody – because, again, that would make this whole process better. It's okay. Guys that we know can come up versus guys that we kind of know we need to develop and draft. Like, it's NFL scouting. It's free agency in college. College is high school and portal. So there's not that much difference here. We're just talking about a couple degrees of separation here. Lars, I think that's a great note for us to end on today because it is a tough situation. We'll see what happens. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a bunch of flips later on in the cycle, which, you know, hey, shameless plug. We got all the, the just the first dibs on that is going to all our insiders. Again, the link to that is down in the description below. Free two-week trial. And after that, it's $4.99 a month. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all the videos for tuning in. And thank you so much for making Lockdown Huskies your first listen today. Now for your second listen, check out the Lockdown Big Ten podcast. Our guy, Craig Sheeman, puts the Big Ten first. When everyone else overlooks it, you can find Lockdown Big Ten on YouTube, wherever else you listen to your podcast. And again, if you like all the content we have to offer over here, make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast. So that's YouTube, Spotify, App News, Games, Sound Music. We're there. We're everywhere. We're up this channel with new content every single day so make sure you click that like button click that little bell so you can never miss when we post a new video if you have any questions comments concerns drop them right down below in the comment section and if you're audio only please if it's a five-star review as it does help us out a lot thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you on tuesday